33 Amokas were at the start of the 610 mile race gathering together <laughs> Southern Brittany's finest lineup ever. It was a clean start at 10.30 Universal Time, coordinated in the Coureau de Groy with no recalls and no collisions. Concentration, excitement, apprehension, every possible emotion was in evidence on the docks of Lorient La Base and Kerneval this morning as the skippers cast off and made for the start zone in Les Coureau de Groy. Amidst the legendary sociability, which has become a trademark of the Defi Azimut Lorient agglomeration, there was a hint of solemnity in the air as the troops readied themselves for battle. With 33 boats in the running, helmed by some 66 sailors in all, some of whom have a string of offshore race wins to their credit, it's hard not to highlight the epic challenge that lies ahead of them on this 610-mile course. At 10.30 Universal Time coordinated, the competitors in this 48-hour azimuth set sail in a foreboding autumnal weather system, which will likely be far from easy to negotiate. Save for four or five boats, this lineup is reminiscent of a Figaro or the start of the Vendée Globe. It's a very rewarding outcome, and it's exhilarating for us athletes to be a part of this event and see it go from strength to strength," explained Yen Elis this morning from aboard Archia Paprek, one of the latest additions to the fleet. As such, it's sure to be one of the boats to watch. We are where we wanted to be, among the Mocha's top five. We are going to try and hold on to our place for as long as possible, but I admit that there's going to be a steep learning curve to negotiate in this fairly important race, confirmed teammate Johan Richem, who's making an amazing debut in the class. Four other skippers this 48-hour azimuth, with its course designed specially to provide a taste of every point of sale, is an opportunity to dive headfirst into an Amoka competition. After the Solitaire du Figaro, I'm thrilled to be switching craft, admits Gaston Morvan, as he makes his major debut alongside Giancarlo Padot, who is back in action with the same boat albeit with big new foils. I'm going to try and give him a few little inshore racing tips. The weather isn't going to be easy. It's a bit stressful, but I'm fortunate to be sailing alongside an experienced sailor. Now it's up to me to show him he's made the right choice, grins the sailor, who has just rounded off a fabulous solitaire, Du Figaro, with a fourth place. For Violette d'Orange, de Veneer, this race is going to be a real baptism of fire. This morning I was a little stressed, but now that I'm aboard the boat I feel better and I'm focused. I feel good and safe on her. I'm thrilled to be setting sail with Damien, Guyou, who has a wealth of experience to share, enthuses the 22-year-old, who's quickly raising her game, and has the Vonda Globe in her line of sight. Before this major planetary adventure though, her focus is on performing well in her very first race aboard her Amoka, formerly Jean Lecam's, Hubert. As the fleet approaches the start line, they are greeted by stormy skies colored by a combination of blue patches and thick cloud. The island of Groy seems to boil up beneath a looming nimbo stratus, but the wind has less punch to it than forecast. To the south a big squall, that the fleet should be able to sidestep, sets the scene for this 48-hour azimuth. We'll have quite a bit on our plate in this race and typically the course will also give us the opportunity to sail neck and neck with the others. It's crucial that we make the most of this direct confrontation to quickly find the right trim, explains Charlie Dalen, the double champion of the Defi Azimut, who is sailing his brand new massif, Santi Provoyance, which is already showing great promise. For now, the wind seems to be remaining manageable, and one by one the foilers are shaking out their reefs. It's under full mainsail and J2 that most of the leading pack line up for the start. It's a very long line, which means the most experienced sailors won't get snarled up around the committee boat and can set sail fully powered up. Such is the case for Cheryl helmed by the dynamic duo of Bayou and Cam Mars, who lead out of the starting blocks closely followed by initiatives Coeur Davies, Boutel, and Metro CoQV, Bestaven, Polv. Though nobody copped a heavy hour-long penalty for overshooting the start, it's mayhem in the chasing pack and those keen to defend a seemingly favourable position at all costs are having to pay the price. As is often the case, it was important to make a break for it to leeward to really be able to show what they are made of, 
especially with the shifty breeze creating some holes in the dirty air in the wake of the leaders causing some of the boats to stall badly. Ultimately, it's Initiative's Coeur which brings her a game and is first around Lay Chat's Cardinal Mark, match racing with the fleet's other bright red boat, Group Apicel, Segan, Boogs. The swell picks up a tad and there is lots of jockeying for position between for the planet, Good Child, Ruiant, and Metro QV, Bestaven, Polv. It's not clear at this stage whether to luff up towards waypoint zero or slip along under the fleet to hold onto some boat speed. Forming part of the chasing pack, Massif Santi Provoyance goes for the second option and quickly makes up ground. The pace is picking up and, as the ribs and spectator boats return to Lorient La Base, the leaders are foiling upwind at over 15 knots. The whole fleet is heading westwards, where Waypoint 1 awaits them some 100 miles further down the racetrack along with the negotiation of a front early tonight. In the meantime, the focus will be on rounding the Penmark H headland at which point the wind is set to veer as it builds. The perfect opportunity for the fleet to reposition themselves then and establish a hierarchy on the leaderboard. At 1 pm Universal Time coordinated, Cheryl was already 10 miles ahead of Human Immobilier, Cornic, Luro, and this is only the beginning. Jeremy Bayou said, The appeal of this event is that it slots in just before the autumn race, whether that be the Transat Jacques Vab, the Route du Rhum, or the Vendée Globe. It enables you to really test things out. It's a fantastic rehearsal for the skippers, the boat and also the shore team. It's an absolute must. We are pleased to be here enjoying sailing, though we are all too aware that sailing well in this race will help us in the Transat Jacques Vab. We know that you can't afford to have the slightest glitch in a mocha. A ripped sail is damning for the final ranking. We mustn't break our boats or make any strategic mistakes. C'est génial de retrouver des petits copains, la grande famille de Imoca. Après la concurrence est de plus en plus rude, il y a pas mal d'équipes très en forme. Il y a 5-6 bateaux qui peuvent gagner la course. On est là pour, pour faire le mieux possible, gagner si c'est possible et puis on verra. C'est une classe qui est encore en pleine évolution, personne n'a trouvé le truc idéal qui marche tout le temps. Et on sait qu'on va se battre et que l'erreur elle est un peu fatale, c'est très excitant. On va avoir beaucoup de conditions différentes. Ok, il est en train d'abattre. Je te propose d'abattre et dérouler. Ça monte, ça monte, on est en course 